In today's Travel Watch, we are putting the spotlight on some of the best travel destinations and luxury vacations in the world. The results for the 2023 Condé Nast Reader's Choice Awards are out today. Each year, readers are asked to vote for things like best cities, countries, hotels, and resorts based on their own travel experiences. And the results can sometimes be surprising. So Jesse Ashlock joins us now to discuss. He's the Deputy Global Editorial Director of Condé Nast Traveler. Thanks for joining us. So this is my first, back. first question before we get into some of the highlights. Um, I'm curious about how you even go about kind of collecting this data, how you, how you craft your questions, because a good vacation experience is really subjective, and it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, just because you went to a five-star hotel, you feel like you got a great experience. So true. So there are a lot of nuances to the way that we operate the survey. Um, and before I explain those, let me just say that the results do go live on our website in about uh, 10 minutes, okay. I think. So be sure to head on over after I'm done talking mm -hmm. to find out about what is the number one island and airline and so on and so forth. Um, and this year, a huge uh, there was a huge increase in the number of people who did the survey, over half a million, which I think shows that people are out there traveling yeah. again, and they want to make their voices heard. And they have the ability to do that. They don't just pick number ones, but they can leave long testimonials, hotel reviews, their thoughts and inner, innermost feelings. Um, and sometimes we even excerpt the things that they have to say and run them in our magazine, run them on our website. Um, they also have the opportunity to rank hotels and other uh, travel entities on individual criteria, for example, service or food um, or design. And this year, uh, one of the top performing, actually it got a perfect score, um, hotels in the design category was the Fogo Island Inn oh, yeah. in Newfoundland, Canada, which um, celebrated its 10th anniversary this year. And it's a really important hotel. It's been quite pioneering in terms of its sustainability approach. They're, it's famous for having these like uh, nutrition labels that show where your travel dollar is going. Um, and I think it shows how much travelers care about sustainability and giving back coming out of the pandemic. Yeah, whenever I fantasize about just running away from the world, I always fantasize size I run there because it when you sort of see the images it looks like it's just right at the edge of edge of the world and you could just enjoy solitude I'm an only child so solitude's important to me every <laughs> once in a while and so I I see why that hotel was ranked so high it, it looks stunning in a very kind of under minimalist sort of way um, totally agree. So let's talk a little bit about kind of some of, I guess it's been 36 years now that you guys are collecting this information. Um, what are some of like the top qualities that you find people, you know, that's really instrumental in people having an excellent vacation? Well, I think that that has shifted um, every year. Uh, since the pandemic because the way that we're able to travel and the reasons that we're traveling has changed one of the really striking things to us this year perhaps the biggest story of the survey was how completely long-haul destinations have returned mm. and they weren't present in the same way the last couple of years um, our number one country was japan uh, and new zealand scored number five on that same list um, and the rest of the, um, the list was a lot of european countries including greece which have been super popular since mm -hmm. the pandemic but japan being number one new zealand being number five showed us that um you know people are investing in those those bucket list trips um those trips of a lifetime again and the the uh, top cities um internationally showed that even more with cities like singapore seoul and tokyo um and so so, um, you know, my own family did this for the first time since before the pandemic. We went to Korea in April, and wow. I think that's something that a lot of travelers are uh, are doing, and they're coming back, and they're telling us that they did it, and they're so psyched that they're traveling a long ways again. You know, that's so I am one of those people, because after two years of not being able to travel, I also felt compelled to, like, scratch something off the bucket list. So I went to Japan. I thought it was all novel. Now I realize I'm just part of the crowd that felt the same way. But it was a fantastic experience. Well, please do me a favor and come to our website in April of next year when the survey opens again and tell us all about your experience and why Japan's the best. <laughs> I will definitely do that. Do we have a little more time? Oh, no, we have. OK, the reminder, everyone head to the website in about 10 minutes and then you'll be able to see the top list for hotels, destinations, all that stuff. So you, too, can have an excellent vacation. Uh, Jesse, thank you very much. Thank you. Always a pleasure.